Okay, if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in the differential equation. Okay, so before you, you proceed, make sure you've got a little bit of knowledge about a uh, first order differential equation. First order only, okay? So if you're doing uh, Cambridge A-levels, it should be in your P3 maths, normal maths, no need to go so far, okay? So if you look here, we have two hopefully familiar graphs with you by now. The first one on the, on the left side, where it shows the acceleration against displacement. This graph is the graph that helps us define whether a system is in simple harmonic motion or not. Okay, so if it's in simple harmonic motion, you get a straight line graph passing through the origin. So the question here is how do we go from the AX graph, acceleration displacement, to this VX graph, velocity displacement. See the ellipse behind my head? Ah, uh, how, how, are, how, are, what's the equation? Uh, how to derive? Well, uh, you are in the right video. Today, we're going to derive this equation. All right, so hang tight. Let me pull up some maths. Okay, so our objective in this video is to start with the simple harmonic motion general equation. A is equal to negative omega square x and come out with V. You want to find V in terms of x. That's all. Okay, so first things first, I will start with what I'm supposed to start now. Okay. So I'm going to start with a is equal to negative omega square x. Now I notice that a can be written in terms of x, right? Because if you think about your displacement, velocity, and acceleration, they are actually related through calculus. Yes, yes, good job. So from here, velocity is actually equal to dx dt. So you differentiate displacement one time with respect to time, you get velocity. And then when you move another level down, you will get acceleration is equal to dv dt. But wait a second, it simply means I differentiate x two times. I differentiate x the first time, I get velocity. I differentiate x again, I get acceleration. So this a all can be written as d2x dt squared. Now before you panic all over, don't panic. You got this. So d2 square, I mean d2x dt squared. But you see, uh, before I, I, I start here, because I really don't want second order differential equations. Can I stick to the first one? So I just want to try my luck and see whether I can work with this first. Okay, the other one is the, if needed, lah, huh? I hope to not need it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my steps here. Or rather, I will write some, some notes here for you, okay? So what I'm doing is I will substitute a is equal to dv dt inside because I memang want v. I want the v to be in my equation because I want to find v. See, remember the objective here? To find v in terms of x. Okay, so I'm going to substitute now. a is equal to, sorry, dv dt dv dt is equal to negative omega square x. And you got a teacher. Um, you see, uh, this one looks fine. I have v. But you see this t very, very kachau, you know. Why is the t here? I don't want the t to be here. This t should not be here. Okay, my friend, you don't want the t. We got to legitimately get rid of it. So in maths, there's this thing called the chain rule where we insert a dummy term. So I'm going to let dv dt be written as uh, dv over dx multiplied by dx over dt. Did I change anything? No, I didn't change anything. Okay, everything else kept the same. I just insert the dummy term dx there. Okay, and you will see why in a short, hot moment. I'm going to put this one here. So this one will be dv over dx multiplied by dx over dt. And this is equal to negative omega square x. Now, before you panic, because you're like, you know, this one need to do weird stuff. No, 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 no weird stuff involved. What I'm going to do now is I know that v is equal to dx over dt. So this dx dt is dx dt. Because you differentiate, ma. you differentiate x with respect to time, see? v is the x dt is equal to velocity so this whole thing become v law this one so now i have dv over dx 
multiply by v is equal to negative omega square x. And then now I'm a bit like, hey, I think okay already because why? We have v and dv. We need to sort it out later, but it's not really a problem. And we have x and dx. So we have to do a perhimpunan. We have to gather all the v1 side and all the x1 side. We need to split them up. Okay, because you want to do some form of differentiation of solve the first order differential equation. So before you integrate, you have to compile and put all the variables and sort the variables. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to sort variables. All right, let's do some renovation. Here I will have v dv and this will be equal to negative omega square x dx. Very good. Okay, so your variables are now sorted. <laughs> Once you sort them, already sorted them all, then you integrate. Okay, so you integrate. I'm going to integrate you and I'm going to integrate. Teacher, the omega square, no need to integrate. Like, the omega square is a constant, remember? Omega is 2 pi f. 2 pi over t is constant. So the constant can be left outside of the integral. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate. So normally at this point, I ask students, do you want to put boundary or do you want to put plus C? So since there's no students here, or is there students here? Let me check. Hmm. So if people tell me, I will respond. But since don't have, I will do what I like. i recording my, okay. So remember that you can find boundary condition. You can also uh, find the constant of the integral. I'm going to use boundary condition, okay? Teacher, you know boundary condition, man. I know, I know, I know. Remember, when we started this, we know when x is equal to 0. So if you want to think about boundary condition, think about pendulum. At this point here, x is 0. Then the pendulum swing up. No, 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 no. At this point here, x is equal to a. Do you know the speed at x equals 0? I mean, you know the speed is the fastest, but you don't necessarily know what that value is. So if you use x equal to 0, you don't know what v is. But I know when x is equal to a, v is equal to 0. And 0 is my personal favorite number. La, because I can, the terms become easier. Okay, So I know when x is equal to a, v is equal to 0. Okay, And then I'm going to let the velocity at any time not sorry, not at any time, at any position x b v. Okay, so what that means is when the position is x, any x la, x can be anywhere, halfway, all the way, coming back, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you know, again, for you who are maybe new to calculus, so here. So it can be any value of x, anything. That's the variable that is moving in between the two extreme position. Okay, and the speed is v. All right, so now what I could do is I could place x down here and then place v here. Okay, so this is x, this is v. And I'm going to allow the pendulum to travel all the way up to amplitude, I guess. So this will be a. Up here would be A, and here would be 0. Okay. We continue. Ah. Right, what happens when we integrate V? My friend, what do we get? We will get V square over 2. Okay, boundary is 0 to V. And here is negative omega square. What happens when you integrate x dx, you will get x squared over 2, boundary from a to x. Okay, let's substitute. Okay, so from here, I will get 0 minus v squared over 2, and this will be negative omega squared, big bracket. You know the over 2 can take out, right? Because it's a constant term, I pull it out. Whatever that remains in the bracket is easier to handle. So what I have left now is a square over, no more a square, no more over, sorry. Yeah. We get a square minus x square. So I don't know about you, but 
you know, you got over two on the left, you got over two on the right, so over to you, the two will go away. Okay? And this zero minus, it's, it's, it can assume the zero is not there, right? So negative and negative also can go away. Because the negative and positive, or you swap, you change, change position. Okay? So from here, you will get V square is omega square bracket A square minus X square. Teacher, I think we got already, yeah, we got already. So you want to bring the square over and square root also can. So you will get uh, plus minus omega square root of, you don't pandai pandai go square root this one, uh, not allowed uh, because of the minus in between. So you just have to keep the whole format A square minus X square. Oh, as CIE will write it, plus minus square root of X not square minus X square. you be flexible, uh, but also can. All right. So, so yeah, prove it. Flex. Depth. Okay, that's it for the derivation video. I'm not going to talk about the graph because I talk about it in the first theory video. So make sure you know how to sketch the graph and get important information from that graph. All right, that's it for this short and sweet recording. Bye-bye.